Thanks for messing around. Vampire Survivor's Bezic 124, Horses Around, and Gallo Tower and Capella Magna. Thanks for having him watching. Ready to start horsing around? Well, you shouldn't be because horse is very weak. In fact, it is so weak. I'm having to go Divine Bloodline. Hats is just too bad. If Out of Bounds worked with it, it might be feasible, but it doesn't. I have to go for counter damage. Nothing that does counter damage. Pretty bad. But you gotta do what you gotta do to try and make the win. At the very least, the sheer number of hats that gets fired off will eventually do enough damage that it'll be safe. I mean, I'm gonna have to go tier Jisoo over anything, it's too risky otherwise. At the very least, I had a ton of luck. I mean, I had so much luck on one of the failed runs, it was crazy. Like, constant chicken circles, constant light sources, and it still failed just because Hats doesn't have the power and Out of Balance doesn't work with the freeze effect for some reason. I mean, yeah, it says it, but works with the Walt of Pearls and Iron Blue Will. Or, no, it's Jail of Crystal version. Oh, there's the vacuum. Well, almost 500 might is not really important right now, but it eventually will be when we get to the harder waves. Yep, that luck that preceded me. Is not going to show. That figures. Thank blood skeletons. Oh, small clover. Gotta get that chicken. I have too little health to not grab it. Ooh, big level up from that gem. There we go. Knocks out about 50 damage, so that's a full max spinach gone. Throwing his box is as much about damage as it is about area. And speed and other good things like duration. And hopefully, you know, the Arcana chest comes back indoors and doesn't sit outdoors because the inverse for here is not set correctly. I really need to point out things like this in the Discord, but I don't. I don't. Alright, I can grab it now. No problem with that. Yep, banishing time. Oh no. I've only done horse on Polis Replica, I've not done it on Gallo Tower. Right? Right? 
Wait, why don't I have that up? And work. Yes, of course. Of course. Okay, this one has a really, really short spawn radius. Well, I have Divine Bloodline. That solves all my problems. Yeah, that one basically spawns in on you. Oh, one end. Well, I should grab the rank first. Then I can go grab the NFT. And this chest. That has this nice silver ring upgrade inside for me. Huh, neither of those were level. No, oh, and of course, Drowner shows up. At least it's not as bad as Stalker. Though well, I'm sure as soon as I take my hands off the controller because of this, Stalker will show up and grab me. Oh, that was fast. That's Divine Bloodline for you. Even a character as weak as Horse can go through. With no trouble. Well, almost you're Bianca Ramba, then you're really, really bombed here. Like just for comedy's sake, I was looking up some Vampire Survivors tier list, and they put Antonio as worse than Ramba. I'm like, haha, no, Corelo is just that bad. Whip, worse than Corelo? No. Even if you don't evolve it into Bloody Tear, it's still better. It's more damage. Hits more things. It's got a better area. Sure, Ramba's effect with the more amount is better. But he's stuck with Corelo. You're always going to be stuck with Corelo. Heck, I think even base whip would be better than maxed out Corelo. No, I have a lot of health now. Uh, let's take that down a peg. So I can get some more might. Yeah, I knew this was coming. Oh boy. And I will be grabbing a wake since it's too risky not to, and there's really nothing else I would get the benefit out of other than the beginning. And I could just save the beginning for later. I'd rather have the security of getting the benefits of Awake now. This really brought me around on Awake. I mean, yeah, sure, if I had more weapons, it would be no problem. I'd just be chewing through everything, no problem. No problem, eh? Problem? No. But that's not what the second wave is. Anyway, for the third wave, I've had the two ideas, as you know. Uh, same thing what I'm doing here, just have one character go through three stages in a row. Or, I could have three characters to a video, and do different stage, or even the same stage on all of them, and see how it compares directly. And, of course, the option three is I somehow get two controllers, and have three characters to a stage at once, and play with myself. That would be exceptionally dumb. I mean, it would basically be cheesing the challenge, wouldn't it? Where are you, Atlantean? Did you go down? No. Uh, you will go down with this NFT, though. Hey, Arcana this time, I actually got it. Granted, now knowing that Out of Bounds doesn't affect hats for some reason. It wouldn't have mattered if I had gotten the Arcana, since that's what I would have grabbed instead of Awake. 
Even if I grabbed a way, because I don't like that would have been strong enough to actually use it. Because right after the Gallo wave with his wizard team. Candy box. Candy box from a solo pick? What? Also, incidentally, this horse has had so much worse luck than the first run. The first one had like a circle of chickens, every little, like, you know, symbol here. And a bunch of late sources spawning in from Mini Horse. I forgot Mini Horse. Here. Oh, Gallo, can I get rid of you? Dang, these bullets hurt. Man, they made it up through, what was that, a couple hundred health? Yikes. Yeah, look at how little damage Hats is doing with 500 might. Like 100? That's crazy bad. Legitimately one of the worst weapons in the game. The random effects. As like a secondary, sure, but for a solo. Boy, not great. I mean, when would you want to pick hats over anything else? When you're going for a monster run? As a gimmick? Sure. There's no thing I'm going to think like, Oh yeah, I got hats. Like I would with, say, every weapon that's not Corelo, basically. Or maybe Shadow Pinion, too. Well, I mean, you saw how Shadow Pinion turned into Valkyrie Turner. Oh god, Stalker. Police horse is fast. Stalker with Gallo. What a ridiculous nonsense. And at least there's so many enemies on screen that's not chasing me very well. Some would say it's stalking me poorly. Uh oh. Man, it's kind of weird playing three different video games of three different types all in one day, you know? I got my tactical RPG and Unicorn Overlord, my Vampire Survivors and my Vampire Survivors, and some co op horde shooter in Starship Troopers Extermination. I really need to bum rush through the end of Unicorn Overlord. I've got. Only a couple days left till the DLC for 16, and then a few more after that for the Udan Chronicles. And I have to rush the DLC. No matter what, I'm bum rushing that Udan Chronicles. I've waited too long for it. Which means I need to make a backlog so I don't. and fix my sleep schedule. Make sure I don't have work on the 23rd. Which won't even be the 23rd since it's get early access. Yeah, I didn't even make it to this wave. Look how fast they're taking me down with the Bind Bloodline. It's crazy. I mean, it sort of tricks you with such a much easier start here. Man, there's just a the complete lack of piercing. And of course, the Starburst. Who could ever forget the Starburst? No, oh, Gallo's annoyance. Really hard to clear out Gallo when you don't have any ability to actually pierce and hit through him through the giant mobs of bats and all the other thing under the sun. Man, look at how pathetic that damage is. 500% bonus might, and it's still not going through, chewing through these bats. You have to rely on NFT to survive. At least with Christine, it was a horrible gimmick because of Pentagram and Gorgeous Moon. And I did it. It was terrible, but I did it. Hey. You know, some people may say Ryu is boring. But I say I'm boring too. And I like my boring character.
Yeah, now that I think about it. I sort of, I, you know, I play fighting and just sort of drift towards the more popular or main characters, huh? Seek free to Ryu, Sub-Zero. Okay. He's definitely one of the most popular ones. Not main, never main. Except in mythologies. God, what an abomination a game that was. Yeah, sure, the plot was somewhat interesting. Boy, was that one of the worst designed and played games ever. I say this having played very many bad games. Yeah, eh, that's some unholy health there. I'm trying to find that rosary to clear things out, but it just would not show up. Ah, uh, nice easy way before the final devastation to come. Yep, Robot Wave is already off to a wonderful start. Oh, is there an NFT up here? I think there is. Won't be able to find it though. Yep, I'm not going to be able to get any more Divine Bloodline off this. Maybe I should have just kept charging through. On the other hand, they are staying frozen for a lot longer because they're healthier. So I might be able to just create a safe space to get through. Also, an Aura Logian helps. This is a dangerous one. But it might just barely get through with the feasibility. Yep, good thing I grabbed all my backup revives. Now, a good player would be able to win without these. If you wanted a good player, Lex is... Well, Lex is in Unicorn Overlord. Dex is right over there, probably posting like an hour before me. I don't think he has a schedule, he just does it whenever. Funny dude. You know, all those how to grow your YouTube channel things says you should do research on your competition, and it's like, well, okay, I do the same things he kind of does, I guess. I just want to play the game how I want to play it, or with some comments or suggestions. I mean, clearly I know pain from what you're seeing on screen. But, you know, doing boss rash with no any limit break or anything, that doesn't seem fun to me. Well, granted, I don't think he did that, but... Whatever, that's Gallo Tower down. 28.7 million with hats. That is atrociously bad. And Gallo Tower isn't even the worst to come. Time to start horsing around a Capella Magna. Oh boy. The Beswick giveth and the Beswick giveth pain. Huh? Why do I have... Do I not get bonus rerolls here? I mean, the Arcana's here. I'm gonna reload up anyway. Hmm. I'm gonna have to do Heart of Fire. This level is too hard to not grab it. Duplicators on the map, do not have Clover. Empty Tome, yes. Eventually it will be helpful when I actually get Silent Old Sanctuary later. Oh, 
Alright, mini horse to end the round. Right, go straight to the duplicator. Priority for one is... Oh, I'm not going to get crown. Well, crown or mini horse, whichever shows up first. I don't need that chest. I get area so hard of fire hits more. Oh wait. Crown is on the map, get mini horse. Hey, chicken. Uh, I miss having the numbers. No, I turned off the flash and the numbers when I was doing on streaming on the Xbox Series X and not through the Elgato capture card. I wanted to try to preserve some frame rate. And it sort of worked out. Well, I already have more health than I did at the end of Gala Tower. Probably should have gotten armor way earlier. Uh-oh. Oh, nice. That's fun when you watch uh, some explode like that. Hey, what timing? Eh? Hey, it's like, where's Mini Horse? It's high enough for Mini Horse to start showing up, right? Maybe I just need to max out hats. Probably gonna do some dumb horse pun for the title of the video. You know, ready to start horsing around? Ready to start mezzing around? And now that I can actually record extermination footage, I'm doing that and won't post it. Because I forgot my monitor was not 4K. But I'll be getting a new one one day. Well, actually, it might be here by the time this video gets posted. 4K HDR. Then I can maybe run two monitor setup. And that way, when I stream, I'll actually be able to see what's on the screen because I can angle it correctly. You know, I could make an overlay, but... Well, I'm sort of... lazy pantsing it. Also, I think most overlays are distracting and take up more screen than they need to. Because, like, yeah, sure, if it's something like in 3, 4, yeah, fine. Got a ton of screen issues there anyway. But on the modern cut, if, like, a good sixth of the screen is taken up by things that aren't the game, Oh, many horses here. Kind of distracting. And yet I watch VTubers. I always hated flesh tuber cameras. Flesh tuber, come on, son. Hey, I didn't get the chest like an intelligent person. I deserve this. Wow. Bye bye, Toronto's box. You aren't catching me this time.
tag that will help some more. Yeah, more health. Yeah, look at that. Four damage it might, and it's only doing a couple hundred damage. Like, not even a couple hundred, like 160. I knew Hats was weak. I just did not seem to realize how weak it was. I can run into enemies for more damage than that. And in fact, I will, now that I have health back. Charge! Into the fray, Jan Hord Solonder. You'd think I'd be better at speaking after literally hundreds of hours of recording footage for this, for Pal World, Unicorn Overlord, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. But no, I'm still getting constantly tongue tied. Oh well. No, I don't want the right one, I want the left one. The source of all evil. The left hand. Hmm. Now I think about it, I suppose the reason that they're divided is because they were originally divided on the map in... Verse? Capella Magna? But then the position got changed and never got updated correctly for Inverse because most people don't play Inverse. I think I played Inverse for like maybe f five times before Bezwicking. It was just, you know, so much health it doesn't really result in any more difficulty, just annoyance. So unless you're doing a gimmick run like this, it doesn't really change much. Then again, plenty of failures without gimmicks, so... Hey. And again, it's always easy to say that you shouldn't do, like, just boost in stats to increase difficulty. But boy, is balancing things hard. Also, just sometimes complete nonsense. Oh man, my War 3 editor days. Just copying a trigger, select a hero trigger, walking into a circle of power, copy that six times, fix everything. Oh wait, this one just doesn't want to work. Did it like look the code over like 20 times, just didn't want to do it correctly at all. And that's just, you know, life sometimes. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work at all. Also, sometimes it's badly translated. You know, like, I am on three houses. Good God. How, how many times do you have to translate a line the literally exact opposite of what they're saying? Like, yeah, some people are against the flowery translations. Unicorn Overlords is supposedly like that. Also, making stuff up. I don't like that. I'm going on this. Boy, sometimes it just makes you think people have a vendetta or something. If they're just translating things the exact opposite of what they are. It's weird. If I can go on Google Translate... And just find out it's different. Because it. No, the line just completely opposite of everything else in the game. Like, it's not even say, oh, maybe the Google Translate is wrong. I, I checked this with like five other different people. It was. Crazy, crazy wrong. You know what? Unicorn Overlord has some of that as well. Not even just the flowery stuff, which is whatever. But apparently a lot of the... 
altar stuff. You know, like a praying altar. Some of the altar stuff got changed. And very noticeably changed the people playing with JP voices. You can tell something's amiss. And I don't like that. I don't like things being changed like that. A lot of people go on about, ooh, ooh, the art of translation. But sometimes a horse is a horse. Of course, of course. Uh, here am I going again on another complete rant about translation issues. Well, it doesn't help that specifically Unicorn Overlord has a bunch of abilities just translated wrong. Some of them are just confusing to a degree that's insane. Like there's one skill that says it activates when you get attacked and it boosts your flying allies. But it seems to boost you when you get attacked by flying enemies. And that's just really weird. I know things are easy to get slipped through the cracks. Heck, just look at the sheer nightmare of what I've done for the Beswick. So much things I've overlooked. So many things I've overlooked. Jeez, so much? That's like, I love you so much. Ha! That's a joke, because I don't love anything. Yeah, I, I, I just completely mind blank there. I mean, what am I supposed to follow up with uh, some edgy I don't love anything nonsense with? Oh, hoo hoo. I, now I've got a machine gun. Speaking of now I've got a machine gun, Contra! <laughs> oh man, that one looks like it's going to be super crazy. But what would you expect from Contra and Vampire Survivors? Something sane? Look at how many enemies I'm mowing down. It's almost as much as Contra does. I don't even remember the name of any other character other than... Well, Brad, Fang, and Brownie. And that's only because I specifically made sure to double check that it was hardcore. <laughs> that Brad, Fang, come from. Oh, and I guess Colonel Bahamut. That's because, well, Bahamut. It's a somewhat recognizable name in the common gaming sphere. You know, it's sort of wild about sometimes you think about things that are very common. You have even the slightest interest in something, but then you run into someone who just doesn't know. Kind of wild like that. It was kind of funny that there is things... Uh, that is, what was it? Things that you know is as common knowledge, but you know other people wouldn't know. Just because of the way you lived your life or something. Hey, that kind of thing, I don't blame you. But if you don't know who Goku is, well, how are you on the internet? Like, not even if you've never watched Dragon Ball, but it's such a cultural icon to Japan media. And it's just kind of baffling to think if you've ever been on the internet, you haven't ran into it. And in the end, Dragon Quest is not popular in the West whatsoever. Well, it is the gold standard of the JRPG in the J are planned. Yeah. 
Oh, do I have the sound on? Good, I do. Oh, it's so hard to tell sometimes. So I wonder when Goku is again added. Oh. Yeah. What do you think is going to be added first? Vampire Survivors to Fortnite? Or Goku to Vampire Survivors? We have Goku with a gun. But do we have Goku with a whip? That's the real power. Does Fortnite have a whip? I mean, probably. Oh yeah, there was also some other vampire crossover with Castlevania. Like V-Striker or something. Oh no, it showed up as part of the Wreck videos. But I am my own man and I don't watch Wreck videos. Please ignore that's how some of my most stable situations have shown up. It's all dead. It's only the Atlantean left. Oh. Hey, candy box. Bye, candy box. I forgot I was doing Divine Bloodline Heart of Fire. Huh. That's weird. Why are they going down so easily? I don't even have the high enough might that this should be happening. Well, I guess just because of my giant health pool, I'm getting damaged less, so I'm not noticing it. If I had less health, I'd have probably gone down a bunch. It's kind of weird that Capella Magna is going to end up taking less revives than Gallo Tower. Huh? Well, that's done. 30 million. Jeez, that's so bad. Absolutely terrible weapon. I don't think horse gets any bonus, does he? Well, more projectiles, but... Well, either way, Megalo Impostorina is up next. Should be much easier. Mostly because the next levels are super easy. And we've got a horse done with 176 and 177 for the Beswick. Capella Magna and Gallo Tower and Gallo Tower was a more difficult one. Go figure. Megalo Imposter Mina is going to be up next. That should be much easier because, well, it's Moon Glow into Green Acres. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support you've given me. Like if you liked. Disliked if you didn't. Give a comment if there's any builds you want me to try or any changes you want me to do. A subscription if you want to support the channel. Have a good day and keep...